in at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Retro Trekking with the Caramel Apples Podcast, the rotten apple snack that brings you a retro vibe, both crunchy and sweet, with your host Kennedy Rizzo and Cooper Lee. Watch for enemy fighters. They're coming in. Three marks at 
<laughs> That's right. So first things first, the line, Luke, I am your father, was actually just, I am your father. Yeah. But it's become so famous and recognizable in pop culture this way. So we just went with it. <laughs> I like it too, you know, because it's like, that's one thing about Star Wars. You can have adaptations about it. You can have... Uh, it's contagious. <laughs> yes. But like you can you can make jokes about it. You know, you can have it all seriousness. Like Parody. there's puns. Right. Yeah. So the fact that, you know, Luke, I am your father is what people kind of think was actually the quote. It's like, yeah. hey, you know, watch the movie. You'll find out it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. This is a brilliant retro gem, isn't it? Star Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So our rotten apple snack today is on Darth Vader. And here's our caramel version for Darth. AKA Lord Vader or Anakin Skywalker, young apprentice to Palpatine. You know, he wears many, many hats. He does, but we recognize the helmet the most. <laughs> There's no escape. <laughs> he can't get rid of that helmet. No, no. He cannot. He cannot. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. And as mentioned in our season finale, three different actors actually brought the infamous Darth to screen in the three original movies. You know, for the physicality, you know, the ominous voice, mm -hmm. and the lightsaber wielding abilities. No doubt. Mm -hmm. So that being in order, David Prose, uh, James Earl Jones, and Bob Anderson. Oh, that's, see, I, I, that's why it's so cool going back and, and dissecting. Right. Some of the tech specs and some of the interesting things that came into, they put into the film. You know, like you think, oh, just making a movie. Okay, no big deal. It is a big deal. Oh, yeah. With attention to detail and everything. So that is pretty crazy. Three actors. Yeah. I mean, and you think about it, because Darth, you know, he was this imposing figure on screen. That's right. <laughs> You know, he can't be standing head and shoulders with everybody else. You know, he had to be the tall guy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Second only to, I believe, uh, Chewie. <laughs> you know, who was, I believe he was like 7'3 or something. So Are you kidding? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't, it's not too far of a stretch, but man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, being, that adds to being so imposing, being yes. tall in stature like that. So... And then you add the voice, and then, like we said, the, the wielding abilities of the lightsaber action. That has to be on point. That's right. This is an this, He's a masterpiece. Oh, my goodness. This, Absolutely. This character is a masterpiece. Yes. But, you know, we can't not mention... That, you know, in episode one, young Anakin was played by Jake Lloyd. And then for episodes two and three, was played by uh, Hayden Christensen. That's right. We needed eye candy. I mean, there is plenty <laughs> of eye candy in Star Wars. But I am a firm advocate of that. And Hayden Christensen fit the bill. Okay. <laughs> I'm off my caramel soapbox. <laughs> Nice plug, by the way. <laughs> sure, that's just for you, Hayden. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of Hayden, 
Mm -hmm. Fans had the opportunity to meet Hayden if they made it to the Megacon in California back in March. Oh, wow. This past March. How come I didn't hear about that? <laughs> Man. Fooey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a long story, too, there, folks. Right. <laughs> Fooey indeed, yes. <laughs> March was just a couple weeks back, so, yeah. I know. <laughs> Never tell me the odds. Never tell me the odds. But that's really, really cool. Yeah. That's like even the part about the fact that um, one of the series that they're doing on Disney was the Obi-Wan series. And Hayden reprised his role as Darth in that so that's cool you know because it's like here he's a lot older now he was a younger person when he did it originally yeah so he was able to come back and reprise his role in as being darth because we never really still saw him fully on screen as darth right mm -hmm. in episode three we just mm -hmm. saw it towards the end right right oh my god it's like this is so cool so cool i love the fact that they're picking up on other parts of the story and bringing it now we can see it now that oh, is like, crazy like i you know coop of the two of us she's like the more rabid star wars fan <laughs> so i think i may be marginal i mean i like it but yes. like coop got me beat you know no oh. <laughs> but seriously like some of the other offshoots of it like it's, that's out of my realm like mm. i haven't kept up with it yeah so yeah this was her jam <laughs> but get this okay Rumor has it that it could have been Leonardo DiCaprio um, if he hadn't passed on being the character. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and I know there were some mixed reviews out there about Hayden actually being in the role. Oh, okay. But I approve of old Hayden in the role myself. I'm sorry. In my oh, I'm with you. Yes. Yeah. So you have our vote, Hayden. You did very, very well. We're glad you, <laughs> you, we're glad you decided to actually play the character. That's right. And um, just real quick, was he, did, looks wise, did he look older? Um, he looks more mature. Okay. Yeah. Ah! But right. it's not a bad thing. Okay, because he still has the hot factor all over that. Okay. <laughs> just asking. Yeah. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, before we stray too far from the dark side... <laughs> Um, I believe, now forgive me if I mispronounce this, I am not 100% sure, um, Toshir Mifuni? I'm not 100%, I believe he was Japanese. Kanpai! But he was from Seven Samurai and other Samurai feature films. Okay. Um, I believe these were back in the maybe 50s or 60s, like they're older. Okay. It's also said that he passed on the role of playing Vader. That would have been in the original films. Oh. Um, and I guess Vader's moves are actually based off of the character he had played in these other movies. Mm. And the costume was even kind of specifically the helmet. <laughs> <laughs> were patterned off of being a samurai. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. I can kind of see that. All yeah. right. Yeah. So, you know, because of the special effects back then, you know, it, it kind of left a lot to be desired. Okay. And I guess Mr. Mifuni was worried that the portrayal would kind of cheapen the image of the samurai. Oh, interesting. It would be interesting to find out what he thought after seeing it and where it got to after the fact. Um, he's he's no longer with us. I, oh, I believe he's passed. He, yeah, and oh, I don't okay. know what the time period would have been when he died. You know, oh, was okay. it before these were completed? I don't know if it was shortly after. Mm. But anyway, he passed on the role um, when it was offered to him originally. Okay. Well, you know, it's always interesting to gain insight into the could-have-beens. Yeah. It would be a very different movie if any of these people accepted the role. Oh, exactly. I mean, just like with Leo. Yeah. I mean, he's a <laughs> great actor in his own right, but like he's in other stuff and he he blows it out the water, but... I don't know, would he be good in this role? You, he'd do it. Yeah. But, like, no, it needs to be Hayden. And, like, what you were just talking about, Mr. Mafuni, whatever. So, yeah, yeah. 
For what it's worth, though, no way of knowing if it would have been the juggernaut it is today, just based on the changes. So yeah. it's just, we don't know. Yeah. Impossible to know that. Yes, yes. You know, and then, you know, when you're thinking about Darth Vader, <laughs> you know, a couple words come to mind. Hot mess. <laughs> right? can we come up with <laughs> yeah uh yeah he's just the force to be reckoned with he is he's a force within the force okay <laughs> he is <laughs> sorcerer's ways lord vader your sad devotion to that ancient religion has not helped you conjure up the stolen data tapes or given you clairvoyance enough to find the rebels hidden fort I find your lack of faith disturbing. Enough of this. Vader, release him. As you wish. <laughs> you know, so that we got you thinking about dark side and complete. <laughs> Wait, I gotta say it right. Dark side. Complete. <laughs> Yes, again, pop culture doesn't miss a beat, you know, because Family Guy summed it up best when Stewie says, oh, this is better than when the Emperor discovered the formula for great Star Wars dialogue. <laughs> something, something, something dark side. Something, something, something complete. Lord Vader, your inside references to the Los Angeles real estate market haven't given you the clairvoyance to turn a profit on that condo in Glendale, nor has it... I find your lack of faith disturbing. That property is in a prime location, 20 minutes to the beach, 20 minutes to downtown. There's nothing to do downtown. Enough of this. Vader, release him. As you wish. <sighs> All right, so we're going to plug up that hole? Yeah, we can get it done tomorrow if price is no object. Uh, we'll get estimates. Uh, get estimates, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stewie's a bucket. He really is. <laughs> <laughs> We're doomed. Do we have our totals for how many times Lord Vader or the Emperor spoke the words complete and dark side? <laughs> well, how about Stewie? Again, at last. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Oh, dear. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, complete was seven times, and it was nine times for Dark Side. Oh, did you get that, Orchard Archivers? <laughs> that is some pretty good information there. Yes. Very, very yes. relevant. <laughs> So, of course, you know, we, we can't go too much farther without talking about people who have played, or characters who have played, <laughs> or donned the helmet for Vader. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so, we had Dark Helmet, which was Rick Moranis and Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> thing was huge. It was. <laughs> Probably weighed a thousand pounds all by itself. Oh my goodness, that movie's just next level too. <laughs> and then, of course, we've already mentioned Stewie, but that being Stewie Griffin and Family Guy. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to mention Colonel Harlan Sanders, uh, supposed to be Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> yeah, so fun fact. That he was playing Grand Moff Tarkin. Okay. And um, fun fact: Christopher Lee. <clears throat> maybe there's, we're related. No, no. <laughs> Just oh, kidding. she pulled the joke on herself. I did. <laughs> <laughs> but Christopher Lee actually passed on the role in A New Hope, that being Tarkin. But he, get this: he actually does appear in Episode Two and Three. But I digress. Okay, see, that's still cool info. Yeah. Need the info. I'm the boss. Need the info. 
That's another bad guy. Wrong movie. Right. <laughs> An emperor makes his first appearance in Empire Strikes Back. Dark now takes on the appearance of follower versus being the main bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. is interesting you know because even in the synopsis for well for episode four you know it talks about Darth like pretty much being in the role of main bad guy mm -hmm. like you don't even know there's anyone behind the scenes <laughs> and then we enter into episode five okay then we realize oh there is somebody that's kind of helming this and it's not Darth so that's really cool okay um so Darth pursues the stolen Death Star plans, um, but he is not the origin of those plans. Well, some iconic Vader scenes that literally made me laugh out loud after the iconic saber duel with Kenobi. <laughs> he strikes Obi down and Kenobi disappears and his rope falls empty to the floor. How cool. <laughs> of course, a lot of mayhem ensues. But in the middle of that, Darth takes his foot and taps around on Obi-Wan's robe. <laughs> like he's stepping on bugs or something. <laughs> he needs to look up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so another one is... I believe it was in Empire Strikes Back. Darth is hanging out in the Quabrat. Mm. And it's a chamber that allows him to survive without his helmet. You know, because oh. he definitely needs that. <laughs> <laughs> that her! No, just kidding. <laughs> what her? <laughs> he didn't do his coconut oil treatment. <laughs> <laughs> so the first time you see it... It's like Lord Vader is just hanging out in an egg, right? <laughs> and General Beers comes to relay a message, and Vader just seems completely put out. <laughs> egg time equals hang time. <laughs> oh, huevo. bodies are piling up and it's interesting to track just how many admirals and generals are extinguished at the hands of old Darth. <laughs> they really are just like expendable. I don't know. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do anything wrong and you better watch out. That's right. Maybe old Darth was a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> They have a field there within that, wouldn't they? Right, absolutely. <laughs> Lead them to me. I'll deal with them myself. That line made its way into a movie that James Earl Jones starred in when talking about the son that was actually in that movie. And it's, I'll deal with him myself. Okay. Again, love the pop culture references. Yes. And even richer when they can do it themselves. That is yes. so cool. It is cool. Yes, yes. A fun fact. James Earl Jones didn't feel his contribution was enough in this role in Star Wars that he was not in the credits in the episodes four or five. But by the return of the Jedi, he had changed his mind. Okay. So cool because anytime I hear his voice, immediately it takes me to Star Wars. It's iconic. Yes. Just yes. plain iconic. Absolutely. Well, also on that, apparently... Uh, David Prowse spoke all the parts while in costume. 
found out later that he would be voiced over. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ooh. Yeah, so he might have had a few uh, covert issues in his <laughs> mind about the ones at the, at the helm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think things kind of ended on a sour note. Oh, really? Yeah, I think it was kind of bittersweet. Okay. I don't think it was such a... Mm -hmm. Smiles and rainbow relationship afterwards. I don't know how bad it got, but I don't think it was great. What, you know, it happens. Yeah. You know, you don't get something this big, something this legendary, and not have a few bumps and stuff. Absolutely. And bruises, you know, on the, <laughs> on the path there. So, you know, it's interesting to learn of this stuff, but not real shocking. Right. Just unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, it probably really did help, though, that he did do all the voice work while in costume so that yeah. he could match up. James, when doing the voiceover, could match yeah. up with his actions and stuff. Right. So, you know, it all worked out. It all worked. Okay, so <laughs> here's a pivotal moment in Return of the Jedi. Luke surrenders to Vader. Vader says, The Emperor has been expecting you. I know, Father. So you have accepted the truth. <laughs> the Emperor has been expecting you. I know, Father. So you have accepted the truth. I've accepted the truth that you were once Anakin Skywalker, my father. That name no longer has any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self you've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. That was why you couldn't destroy me. That's why you won't bring me to your Emperor now. I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. Your skills are complete. So... When Luke first found out about this, this was his reaction. No! 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 I think old Luke was having a bad day at that point. Yes. <laughs> so fast forward to this conversation. Luke, I've accepted the truth <laughs> that you were once... Anakin Skywalker, my father. Vader, that name no longer holds any meaning for me. It is the name of your true self. You've only forgotten. I know there is good in you. The Emperor hasn't driven it from you fully. That's why you cannot destroy me. That's why you won't bring me to your Emperor now. Vader ignites Luke's lightsaber. I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. Your skills are complete. Come with me. Obi-Wan once thought as you do. You don't know the power of the dark side. I must obey my master. I will not turn. And you'll be forced to kill me. If that is your destiny. Search your feelings, father. You can't do this. I feel the conflict within you. Let go of your hate. It is too late for me, son. The Emperor will show you the true nature of the Force. He is your master now. Then my father is truly dead. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, there's just moments in this movie that seem like they're next level. Mm -hmm. Like it's taking you even further in the story. Just when you think this is going to be the answer and this is going to be how it ends. Yeah. Then you find out, oh no, we have another turn. <laughs> there's way more coming along. There's, there's much more to be staying tuned for. So here we are, the final battle between Vader and Skywalker. I will not fight you, father. You are unwise to lower your defenses. Your thoughts betray you, father. I feel the good in you. Yes, your thoughts betray you. 
your feelings for them are strong, especially for sister. So you have a twin sister. Your feelings have now betrayed her too. Obi-Wan was wise to hide her from me. Now his failure is complete. <laughs> if you will not turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. At this point, um, as we mentioned, you can certainly think that things are going to go sideways. We, we don't know. This is Return of the Jedi. This is the last one of the original three. And now we know that Luke has a sister and that Vader knows about her. Mm -hmm. What's going to happen next? And he is wanting to take him to the Emperor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We know what the Emperor wants to do. Mm -hmm. And it would not be a good turn of events for Luke to actually, you know, come face to face with him. He does so because Vader is following his master's rule. He takes him to see the Emperor. That's what it's all about. Watching Emperor make light work of Luke. Vader says, no. No! <laughs> he lifts the Emperor up and makes light work out of him, casting him off to the side and down to the depths. Oh boy. Yes, yes. So it's so cool that in the end, Luke was able to reconnect with his father. I mean, this seemed like, this is dark. Mm -hmm. Like, did we really see this coming? The end, he actually was kind of good still, mm -hmm. right, you know, right. and, and now he's at peace, you know, and obviously stay tuned, see how everything works itself out. <laughs> um, but I've enjoyed being able to actually talk about Darth Vader. Yes. Yeah. I think he's probably one of the most recognizable characters of the whole franchise. I mean, when you think Star Wars, probably most people that instantaneously think of the helmet. Think of Darth Vader. <laughs> Absolutely. Think of the Megatude. <laughs> Absolutely. Like we said... <laughs> You got t-shirts, you know, yes. there's all kinds of things that you can find that yes. contain old Darth, as you mentioned. <laughs> he is ripe for pop culture. He is. And I believe I saw a list somewhere. I don't know how official the list was, but of uh, baddies, it was like 50 of the most recognizable baddies. Right? Okay, okay. I think they called them villains, but we'll call them baddies. <laughs> anyway, Palpatine was on this list. Okay. But he wasn't number one. So you have a list of 50, Palpatine's on the list. Guess who was number one on this list? Was it old stinky Darth? Yes! a niche for himself <laughs> in pop culture history we're glad for it we are oh he is a rot now <laughs> <laughs> so so glad that we were able to discuss him today so what a wonderful opportunity we've taken and stay tuned for more that's right may the force be with you <laughs> and that's it for this week's rotten apple snack but as you know there's always more where that came from so stay tuned if this episode entertained you please subscribe and leave us a five-star written review spreading the word is really the best way to grow our podcast and share more iconic memories See you next time in the Retro Orchard, and thanks so much for listening.